Hello everyone, Barb here. I need to make a card and I thought I would base it on this card that I made for my husband for our 36th wedding anniversary this year. I saw this idea of this folded over um, technique somewhere on the internet. I don't remember where. This is not the identical card that was made. And I just, you know, it was one of those things that you kind of catch out of the corner of your eye a little bit. And later on, just sort of, I, I recreated it from memory as best I could. So I thought I would show it to you. And maybe you can do the same thing. So this card was a six by six. The card we're making today is going to be a little bit smaller. I did bring in my uh, stitched scallop brackets. These items were from Close to My Heart. I believe everything here is a Close to My Heart product. Close to My Heart closed at the end of June for ever and ever. So I have a lot of things in my stash because I was a consultant for over 10 years and used their products fairly exclusively for a good 10 years before that. So I have lots of things in my stash and it's good to go digging in your stuff and see what you have, see what you loved that you bought years ago and you didn't use very much or you used it a lot and it's time to bring it out again. So these stitched scallop brackets, these were one of the first um, hmm. toward the beginning of their delving into dyes. This was an oldie moldy. It's called the Friendship Word Puzzle. This was from many years ago. Um, for those who are familiar with Close to My Heart, you see that packaging. You know it was from a long time ago. And this one was actually from the last catalog that I ordered from. So probably the January, February catalog of 2024. And I pulled off one of these sentiments. And here we go. This card is going to measure five and a half by five and a half. So to start out, I have a piece of sapphire cardstock. And it originally was five and a half by 11. Folded it in half. You do want to grab some kind of a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, use a block. Um, you just really want to give a good stiff crease. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use my mat here, but you could certainly use a, oh, a, a ruler. But since I have these nice lines on my uh, Versa mat here, one, two, I'm going to go down two inches. I'm just going to put a little line and I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to get this going. And you could score this. Uh, I'm just not going to. And it doesn't even matter if it's perfect or not. It, it, we're going to go for good enough. That's not perfect. It's okay. My friend that I'm making this card for is not going to judge me harshly. The next thing we have is I'm going to fold that back up and I have this piece of pattern paper um, and I'm going to use that little fold line as a guide and I'm going to come down roughly a quarter of an inch and I'm going to bring in my little trimmer. This is from um, Scoochie Scoochie Tim Holtz. And I'm going to line up those lines. So I've got this line here, that line there, and that's giving me that diagonal cut. I'm going to cut that off. The bottom should fit pretty well. So you can see that's pretty good. You can use liquid glue or whatever you have. 
tape runner. Tape runner's a little faster for this part, so we'll do that. That's my ATG gun. And get that on there just like that. And this is going to fold over. And now this is going to be obviously too long. So we're going to scoot it down to where we feel that that border looks decent. It isn't going to be perfect. And I'm just using a pencil. And just like that. Again, this isn't a perfectly precise measured ordeal. This is just kind of winging it. We're going to line up those two lines again with our little trimmer. This is a Tim Holtz trimmer. I really like it. I've had it for quite a few years. So and we're just going to whack that part off. And we'll lay it down here and see how it looks. It looks pretty good to me. And attach. And that's how I created this. Now you could be more technical with your folding and all the things. I'm not. I'm going to be totally lazy. And I'm doing it this way. Now I do have a piece of 5x5 five five pattern paper. And this pattern paper was 5x5. Five five. And this inside panel is 5x5. Five five. Um, you can do 5.5x5.5. Five five you could do 5 and a quarter. You can just do it how it looks good to you. Sometimes we do projects based on, oh, what, what do we have left in our stash? So this is five by five. And I'm gonna put this down here. This was just a zip strip off of something that I had left over. And again, I'm being very lazy and just trimming that off just like that. Now we need to work on our sentiment. So I did the larger um, label with well, kind of a glittery gold. I like that. I thought it needed a little, a little zip. And we'll get out our sapphire ink and on the white layer we're gonna do let's we're gonna take a chance it looks really blotchy but it is it is a funky um font then there's a little flower and i'm gonna just do couple of flowers and maybe we'll even do one that's sort of off there just like that. The other stamping I need to do is on the inside and here you need to be mindful of where that fold is. So remember about two inches down Otherwise, you'll see it from the outside. And we want that to be a little surprise when you open it. So as long as you're below that fold line, you'll be fine. And I did pull in, let's close up the ink pad before disaster strikes. I pulled in a couple of, well, couple of leaves. This is some stuff that I have still in a little pile. I had cut a bunch. I think these were off of my Cricut. It was for another project. Didn't end up using them, but they're too nice to toss. And I know that you guys do the same thing. You kind of hang on to those things. And so we're going to use them today. So we're going to kind of lay this here. 
and see where we can put this so that it isn't hanging off too much over the side. So I'm gonna get my finger at about the halfway point so I know where to stop my glue, though I think we'd be okay. I like how that looks. So let's do the other side. I think I want this to go, let's see, if we hold it up here, how do I want this? I think I want it to go down. Yep. Get our little glue on there, yay. just like that. Now I do want this to stay put, but I want it to be popped up a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of some 3D foam tape and we'll throw this down here. Maybe a little piece up there, one more for good measure. Peel off the backing, my favorite. Not really. Ooh, we've got thunder going on outside. Yeah, thunderstorms. Yikes. And we're just gonna lay that down like that so it's got a little bit of dimension. And then we're gonna do the same. We're gonna give this a little bit of dimension as well. So I need to, I think I'm just going to put a little bit in the middle. Well, we've got stuff flinging and flying everywhere. Okay. And just like that, I think that will work. That way I'm <laughs> I've got my my foam tape where it isn't going to cause me problems. So isn't that fun? And my friend is a teacher who's coming to visit. And so I thought the, the little word search paper would be apropos for her. Isn't that fun? I love that design. It would work on anything. Just go down two inches, do some folding. There you go. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a blessed crafty day and I'll see you next time.